outer darkness. And he's making reference there to eternity. Beyond darkness. And that, that word outer in the Greek actually means strange. Strange darkness. Unexperienced darkness. No one has ever experienced the darkness of, etern of eternity without Christ. No one to this point. No one alive today I'm talking about. Those who are gone have if they didn't know Christ. But it's an outer darkness. Jude calls it the blackness of darkness. The Greek, the Greek there is really the darkness of darkness. Again, talking about eternity. Verse 6 of that book it talks about the everlasting chains of darkness. So why, why in light of all of this, why in the world, what was God's purpose in even mentioning, even acknowledging the darkness of in His wonderful creation work. Notice the text again. Verse 2. The beginning. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And. Not but. Never put a period where God puts a comma. Never put but where God was in. Darkness was on the, upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, listen to it, notice it please. And the Spirit of God was in the same place as darkness. I... I like the King James Version. It says, and the Spirit of God moved. He moved over the darkness, over the void, the voidness, over the formlessness. The Spirit of God was moving. Glory. He was hovering over, the New King James Version says. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. In chapter 1 of, of the text, in John says, the light shone in the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. It could not comprehend it. We can look at it in a number of ways. The darkness could not explain it. The darkness had no remedy. The darkness had no alternative. The darkness could not overcome it. The Greek actually says the darkness could not seize hold of it. The, dark, the light shone out of darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. You know what the psalmist says? He says God reveals Himself in the night. Isaiah 45 and 2, I will give you the treasures of darkness. I don't know what that is. I don't know exactly what he's talking about there. Some have even put a material aspect on it, but it goes far, far beyond that. God says to His people, I will give you the treasures of darkness. You don't even see, but there's blessings there because I'm there. Yes. I'm in the midst of all of this. I, I'm not hindered. I'm not deterred. I'm not stopped by whatever you see in the yeah. darkness. I'm light, and in me there is no darkness at all. Job, Job says he reveals the deep things <laughs> out of darkness. So what is the purpose? Why did God do this? What, what was the purpose of incorporating darkness into His creation story? Darkness happens. There is no such thing as darkness. It's just the absence of light. Darkness happens. It just happens. Where there's no light, there's darkness. Hell happens. Hell just happens. I want you to think about that. What is the purpose of darkness? Here it is. Here's what I think the purpose of darkness is. The, the reason that God incorporated that in the creation story, the reason that He acknowledges darkness, is to demonstrate His power Amen. over it. Lord. 
to demonstrate, now listen to me, to demonstrate His power over ignorance and misery and sorrow and death and wickedness and gloom and adversity and obscurity. To demonstrate Himself over all of these things that epitomize darkness. He is light, John says, 1 John. And in Him there is no darkness. Psalms 18 and 8, the darkness is under His feet. <laughs> the ignorance and the misery and the sorrow and the death and the wickedness and gloom and adversity and obscurity is under His feet. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, those who sat in darkness, those who sat in ignorance and misery and sorrow and death and wickedness and gloom and adversity and obscurity, those who sat in darkness have seen a great light. One translation said, the light has dawned. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness into our hearts to give us the light of the glory of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Peter says that we were called out of darkness into His light. We were, we were once darkness, Paul said, but now we have the light of light. John 8 and 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Though the darkness surrounds us, though there's ignorance and misery and sorrow and death and wickedness and gloom and adversity and obscurity, all of these things surround us. But those who have the light of life shall not walk in these, shall not be controlled by these. Are you hearing? That's what... Paul was talking about in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. We are not of the night. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. We are children of light. We are children of revelation. In the darkness, in the midst of the, of the surrounding darkness, God reveals Himself to His people. We are children of light. I, I can't help what's, what the darkness is doing. I can't help what, what's going on around us. I can't help what's happening in the world. I can't help what's transpiring in, in politics. I can't, we can't help. It's all, it all has its basis in the darkness. There's a lack of light, an absence of light, and it, it'll only get worse and worse, but I'm not, I'm not walking in that darkness. We're not children of darkness any longer. We used to be, but now we're children of light. We have revelation in the midst of that darkness. There's light all around us. <laughs> Glory. He will show us the path of life. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Now if you believe that, you're in the word every day. If you, really, if you believe that, then you realize how vital the word is to your life. Amen. We're children of light. Job probably said it best. You know what Job went through. I actually believe that Job is an encouraging book. It's a challenging book. But it's full of encouragement. Job was a man of faith. He had his weak moments. And some people, some people jump on him and criticize him. You know why? Because they ain't been there. Amen. You know why? It's easy to, it's easy to criticize. It's easy to ch uh, question you know, somebody's tenacity or their faith or whatever, if you ain't been there. That's a message in itself. Isn't it? But what a testimony Job had. What a testimony. Here's what he said. Listen to what he said. By his light, I walk through darkness. By his life, light, I transcend the darkness. I, na I navigate the darkness. Yeah. By His light, I can see where I'm going. And all the ignorance and the misery and the sorrow and the death and the wickedness and the gloom and adversity and the obscurity that I have to deal with, we have to deal with in this life, He guides us through it. By His light, I walk in the light. The psalmist says, He enlightens my darkness. Chapter, Psalm 16 and 7, He instructs me in the night seasons. Are you listening for that? Yes, he 
Are you listening for that? We all have night seasons. Somebody, if somebody says, "Not a, not a child of God," you, you, you're not living where you're not living in the place that you need to be. Because it happens. Where I told you, we told you a few years ago, we preached a message, "Children of the Valley." Thank God for the mountaintop experiences, but we're not children of the mountain. We're children of the valley. That's where we live. That's where we're needed. But the God of the mountain is still God in the battle. That's that message. But he gives me a song in the night, the psalmist says. He gives me instruction in the night season. Look, look at the text one more time from Psalms 139. Let's back up a little bit. When, where can I go from his presence? From his spirit? From your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in the grave, you're there. Behold, you're there. I, if I make the wing, take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Now here it is. If I say, surely the darkness shall fail, fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. There is no such thing as darkness. It's just the absence of light. If there's light in your life, the darkness will not take you out. The darkness cannot destroy you. The darkness cannot deter you. The darkness cannot... Uh, misdirect you. You cannot miss God if you're walking in the light. I'm telling you today because the light and the dark is the same to Him. You believe that? Amen. It's the same to Him. Is this God's best? Do you have God's best in your life? We kind of shared this a little bit Wednesday night. Been on my heart lately. I'll probably preach on it sooner or later. Have you got God's best in your life? You say, preacher, yeah, I've got God's best in your life. No, you don't. You've got something a whole lot better than anywhere, anything else you've ever had. You've got something better than what you used to have, what you used to know. Amen? That's a good place to say amen. You don't have to, but... you got something better than the world God has to offer. Amen? Do we have His best? No, not really. Because the text tells us there's a, there's a greater truth about this, this thing of darkness and light. We read it. The day is coming when darkness and light and all that symbolizes it, ignorance and misery and sorrow and death and wickedness and gloom and adversity and obscurity, all of those things are going to be totally and once and for all eradicated. Taken out. Taken away. Gone. Finished. Our faith will become sight. Amen. What does Paul say about our faith? In 1 Corinthians 13. Now we see through a glass. And if you're reading from the King James. Now we see. That's I've all, I, we've, Over and over we've emphasized this. We see something. Don't we? We see something God is allowing us. He's showing us. Some things, but eyes never seen, ears never heard, neither has ever in the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love Him. But the Spirit reveals some of it. Paul said we've got the first fruits of the Spirit. So it's like we've got our, our hands cupped against the window. We see through a glass darkly. A dim, like a dim glass. We, we can't make out everything. We can't, we can't explain everything. We don't understand everything. We don't know all that we're seeing. But we know we see some things and our hearts are blessed and we're encouraged and God is true to us. God's faithful. But that's not His best. The best is yet to come. All of these things that surround us are going to be gone. And the day will come, the Bible says, our text says, that there will be no need for a lamp. I like to sit by a lamp at night. I don't like to be in a dark room. I don't, I don't even want a, the TV on without a little light. So I like a little lamp. It's comforting. It's warm. And I'm able to see whatever I need to see. You know, if I need to see the control, how to surf. 
There won't be any need for the comfort of a light of any sort. In fact, he goes on to say that the sun won't even be needed. I don't believe that means the sun's going to be done away with. That's going to have no role. It just won't be needed. There's going to be a brighter light if we could say it that way. The Bible says Jesus will be the light. Amen. There'll be no need for the sun for the Lamb of God will be the light. Amen. It will be an eternal day. An eternal day. Think about it. See, I'm not sure I like that preacher. I, I like to sleep at night. I don't know if we'll sleep during the, during the eternal age or not. I doubt it. Uh, you know, people have other ideas of what's going to be happening, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be caught up in worship. We love to worship today. We love the presence of the Lord. Can you imagine that for eternity? Do you ever get tired of the presence of the Lord? Do you ever get tired of is the reality of Him in your life? Think of eternity. It's going to be an eternal day. I love that old song. I've said it, quoted a lot of times. There will be no night in that city that John saw coming down. For Jesus will be there and His glory will abound. There will be no night in that city of everlasting day. The Lamb of God will take the night away. I'm telling you, that's God's best. The best is yet to come. He provides what we need today. Not to get by by the skin of our teeth. Not to just squeeze through. I'm not talking about that. Everything that we need, this side of heaven, He'll provide. One day I won't need faith. One day I won't need hope. Faith will be sight. My hope will be realized. Can you imagine that? Can, you, can we comprehend such a thing? So my challenge to us today, my, my encouragement to us today, don't try to navigate the darkness of this world on your own. Navigate the darkness of the world as a child of the light, as children of of the light. That song comes to mind. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Do you have him today? Amen. Do you know him? Is he real? Is he precious? Are you looking for that day when there will be no more night? A lot of songs have been wrote about that, isn't it? It's going to be a reality. Stand with me. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the sweet promises of your Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of light, even in the darkness. We are not of the darkness. But we have to contend with the darkness. The night seasons. But thank you, Lord, that you're real and precious in times of sorrow and death, in times of sickness, in times of gloom and despair, in times of obscurity when it seems like we're all alone. Yes, and in times of ignorance, when we thought we knew, we thought we had it all figured out, we we thought we had the answer. We thought we'd seen the end of this thing. We have to deal with it again, even in those times. Thank you for the light. The light that shines greater. The bright, darker the darkness, darkness, the brighter the light. Oh, if we could get that, Lord. If we could get that. The darkness, when the darkness seems overwhelming, when it seems no end, when it seems like there's no way out. Then the light, your light is always there shining. This is the way. Walk in it. I'll show you the path of life. I'll cast a light on your steps. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. In 
his life, life we experience that life. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sweet Spirit of God. Just let, let these precious truths sink into our hearts this morning. I am of the light. I'm, I'm a child of the light. I'm a child of revelation. I'm a testimony to the power of the light over darkness. I'm evidence, I'm proof that we're more than conquerors through Him that loves us. My life reflects, our lives reflect the truth of God's Word. Come what may, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I make that declaration today. God help us, every one of us, to make that declaration, my God that I serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing changes. Time does not change Him. A circumstance or situation does not change Him. God, I pray that this truth would find its mark in our hearts. The witness of the Holy Spirit, Lord, would anchor it deep within the 